Hello and good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. I am Mark Lukey, Superintendent for Bakersfield City School District. We are going to begin shortly, so please be patient with us as we continue to let uh, folks in to the room from the waiting room. Uh, we encourage you tonight to utilize the chat to add questions, uh, provide comments. As we go through tonight's presentation, we have staff monitoring the chat box and we will respond to questions as time allows. Uh, we will also save the chat and uh, we will provide um, responses in, a, in, a, in an FAQ document um, as early as tomorrow, more likely on Monday. If you are from the local media and you wish to have uh, excerpts of tonight's town hall, please reach out to Tabitha Mills and she will share that with you. We are recording the town hall meeting and we will pro provide it to everyone on our YouTube channel. So again, if you are part of the local media, please reach out to Tabitha Mills and she can provide uh, access to the video uh, as early as tomorrow morning. Uh, but once again, we will have the video uh, uploaded to our YouTube channel um, later this evening or again tomorrow morning. So once again, on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Bakersfield City School District, I am <clears throat> the superintendent and I welcome you to tonight's town hall meeting. Uh, bear with us again as we continue to let folks in and we will begin shortly. If you require translation, Please utilize the interpretation icon in the bottom of your uh, screen, and you'll be able to access our Spanish language um, by our wonderful Maria Arevalo. So please do that. So let's go ahead and begin and jump in. So again, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I am Mark Lukey, Superintendent, welcoming you to our town hall meeting to share with you our plans for the upcoming 21-22 school year. School kicks off on Wednesday, August 18th. And so we are excited to welcome back our 30,000 students. Before I jump into our uh, core values here, I want to reiterate that uh, BCSD is preparing to return to a full day, five day a week instructional program. We recognize that in spite of the pandemic and um, all that that brings, the best place for our students uh, is to be in our classroom. So as we go through tonight's presentation, we will discuss in more detail uh, the protocols and measures we're putting into place uh, to protect our students and ensure that our students and staff uh, are in a safe environment. So tonight I wanna share with you our values of equity, integrity, caring, collaboration, and personal and collective accountability. And I want to focus on collaboration. Uh, for the past 17 months, since March the 18th, 2020, we have worked together to ensure that the safety of our students comes first. The safety of our staff is also first and primary of importance. But ultimately, as we sit before you tonight on July 29th, we are here to encourage you that our district, our classrooms, our school facilities are the safest and healthiest places for our students and staff. And tonight we're going to walk you through our safety protocol. So if we can go forward one more slide, please. So as we go forward, our core priorities, the culture of collective efficacy is our priority number one. We believe in the collective capacity of our staff and the ability of staff at each school to positively affect student achievement. A culture of student-centered schools. We believe in the power of relationships, the importance of teaching self-awareness and self-management techniques leading to responsible decision-making to support the development of the whole child, to compete in our global economy. A culture of teaching and learning, we believe grade level mastery of content standards, language, literacy, mathematics, and the sciences are critical for college and career readiness. And a culture of access and inclusion to ensure a multi-tiered system of supports for all, all learners. We believe implementing a coherent system is vital to meet the academic, behavioral, and social emotional needs of all students. So again, if you're joining us tonight and you need interpretation, please click on the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen and Ms. Maria Revelo will provide Spanish language for you. So tonight I'm gonna to introduce our table of contents, introduce our two speakers and turn it over to our team. We're gonna begin by walking you through our return to school safety plan. We're gonna discuss 
the requirements of A, B, and SB 130, which is the independent study law um, for the 21-22 school year. We wanna walk you through and discuss our plans to uh, utilize our ESSER 3 funding uh, to enhance our uh, ventilation and air quality of our schools and our classrooms. And lastly, we wanna discuss and share with you uh, our plans and offerings with our extended learning programs uh, and after school programs, AKA our academies. So with that, I will introduce our assistant superintendent of educational services, uh, Ms. Laura Orozco, who will walk us through the next elements of our presentation and introduce our um, person who's gonna walk us through our safety plan. Laura, turn it over to you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you taking the time to hear what we have, the plans that we have for BCSD. And as Mr. Lukey said, we are super excited to have our kiddos back into classrooms and in person, um, where we're excited to bring back all the teaching and academic uh, learning that we we are we have ready for them. Um, buenas, buenas noches a todos los que están aquí con nosotros. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros y tomar su tiempo para escucharnos en la, las metas que tenemos y los planes que tenemos para sus estudiantes. Queremos uh, que ustedes sepan que están, estamos ansiosos para ver a sus hijos en persona y estamos muy contentos de poder este, empezar con las lecciones y mirar a sus estudiantes en los salones. Gracias. So first we'll start with our return to school safety plan and we have Dr. Pullenweider, executive director, that is going to go over the return to school plan. So I turn over to Dr. Tim Pullenweider. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with uh, you here tonight to go over our current safety plan, the highlights. If you wanna to go to the next slide, please. All right, so we have developed a plan for this year that's in accordance with the guidance for health and industry provided by the Centers for Disease Control, um, also the California Department of Public Health and Cal OSHA. So uh, we'll go through each of the basic elements of our plan in general, try to answer any questions that might be out there. Next slide. All right, so we are excited to welcome um, students back to a full um, time, five day a week in-person learning program. Um, so as it has been stated by uh, the CDC and the CDPH, uh, it's possible to reopen our schools in a safe manner and we wanna do so. Um, so BCSD, we are committed to providing a safe and healthy learning environment for all our students and staff and our plan is based upon that. All right, so key safety measures that we have in place. Um, we are required to have face coverings indoors uh, for our employees and also for our students. It's not an optional mandate. We can't, it's not an optional thing for us to do. We have to do that and are mandated to do that. Uh, so we will have um, a face coverings. Everybody enters our buildings will need to wear uh, a face covering, students included, teachers and staff visitors as well. Um, if a student forgets their face mask or should lose it, um, we are able to um, you know, provide them with extras. We have plenty of those things to provide to students. Um, we've done a significant amount of upgraded ventilation work this past year uh, to make sure our air is, um, has more fresh air that comes in and is ionized and cleaned. Um, at a very high rate. Um, so in order to prevent the spread of infectious material through the air to the extent practical and possible. Um, we also have regular cleaning and disinfection schedules. And we instituted these things last year as well, where we daily disinfect, um, regularly clean in order to wipe down all the surfaces we have and keep things as clean as possible. And then we've established um, with our staff regular hand and hygiene procedures so that students have the opportunities to wash their hands regularly, use hand sanitizer regularly, um, so that throughout the day they can keep our hands um, clean. Those are generally the key safety measures that we have um, related to our plan. So um, as it relates to kind of getting back to normal, so we are, we're trying to move back towards that normal reopening um, to the extent we're allowed. And so our school offices will be open to the public beginning August 9th. Um, so if you need to come in and conduct business to enroll students, um, ask questions, 
Uh, our school offices are open August 9th. Um, we also have now where we do not have to have face coverings worn outdoors. So that means our students and our staff, when they are outdoors, uh, they do not have to wear face coverings, which that's great. Kids can play outside on recess, use playground equipment, and have a normal, regular recess outside. Uh, and then they will put face coverings on before they return inside. We have full student busing available this year. There are no limitations um, based um, for student busing. So we will resume that normally. So parents who require transportation or or need that transportation to get their kids to school, we're able to offer that this year. Also, there are no physical distancing requ requirements or limitations that we are bound to. Uh, so that allows us to open fully, have full classes um, like we would in a normal year. So we're very excited about that. Um, there are some things that we still are having on pause um, and we're just doing that right now out of the abundance of caution. So we are not having in-person events that will occur. So uh, a lot of times our big, large face events, um, we're still going to do those things virtually. Um, and we're just going to do that out of the abundance of caution and limit visitors onto campus. Uh, we will not generally have field trips like we would in a normal year. We're still waiting on those as community conditions change. We anticipate having field trips available possibly in the springtime. Uh, indoor sports is on pause for us because of the mass requirement. Uh, we are awaiting further guidance from the California Department of Public Health that they've promised us related to um, sports programs. And once we receive that, we'll reevaluate um, limitations there. And then we want essential visitors only. So for people who have essential business on, on, on campus, uh, we encourage, again, folks to come to school for that business um, so that we can conduct it there. But things that are optional or things that can be handled over the phone uh, we or through Zoom, we would encourage um, our, our parents and our visitors to use those avenues for that. Next slide. So those are essentially just kind of some overall guidelines of our plan and in, in, in kind of direct terms. Uh, we will have daily health screening that we will ask our parents to um, conduct at home, very similar to last year. Um, so our families are asked that if they have any kids that have symptoms uh, to go ahead and stay home, call the school um, and, and let the school know. So it's very important that we do that. Uh, we still have our care team in effect here, which helps us manage um, any time there might possibly be an exposure or any situation and also answer any questions and health related questions that parents may have. All right, so I, I see a question that I noticed there in the chat about our kids able to have hand sanitizer. Uh, there's nothing that forbids anyone from bringing hand sanitizer. We also have plenty of hand sanitizer here at school. Um, so just so you know. All right, um, you may have other questions. I encourage you to put them in the chat. We do plan um, to answer uh, additionally, possibly at the end, and definitely have an FAQ that we'll produce from all the questions that were in the chat. Um, also, there's a question about face coverings and, and what is a face covering? Um, so a face covering is actually defined um, for us by CDPH as being a, um, either a surgical mask or um, a, a double fabric mask. And, you know, we will share those guidances out, um, you know, with our families as we get closer to school. Um, but things like having like the neck gaiter or the bandana that we pull up and down and things like that are not considered face coverings and, um, and would not be allowed. There's a question about, are we having lunch? Yes, we are having lunch. Uh, we do not have any limitations related to lunch and we're allowed to do that. We're happy to return to that normal uh, lunch schedule. All right, so we'll go ahead and progress on. Um, and as we see more questions, we'll, we'll try to answer them as we go. All right, so AB SB 130, which is the assembly bill and Senate bill that was passed with the um, 
passed of the state budget has mandated us to provide an alternative program, an independent study program for those folks who may feel that it's not safe to return their kids to school because they're worried about their health. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, we'll, we'll talk about what that's gonna look like. So this is from the legislature, it's for this year only. And parents have the option to enroll their children in in-person instruction or independent study. So that is the option that is there. Um, so next slide. So here are the requirements for independent study. It's available to students whose health would be put at risk by in-person instruction as determined by the, by the student's parent or guardian. So. Uh, if you determine that and you feel it's not safe, then you can enroll in independent study. Uh, you have to be enrolled in the school district in your home school, and then we can enroll you in that independent study. You'll need to sign a learning agreement. Uh, the learning agreement will have um, conditions about engagements and making sure that um, you are and your student are engaged in daily instruction uh, that will occur. Um, and we'll also outline conditions for if we're failing to come to class virtually or be a part of that independent study, um, that we would then have the right to have a conversation about maybe that's not the right program for you and possibly a return to in-person um, instruction. But we want to make sure we work with all of our families so if they want to stay virtual that they can. Um, also, you have the right as a parent to have a student parent educator conference, be it by telephone, video conference, or in person, uh, in order to ask questions and get your questions answered from your school administrator or school educator regarding the independent study program. Um, so um, the, later on, there'll be a link that you can access to show your interest in wanting to explore being a part of the independent study program. And you, we will be able to have our school staff reach out to you and schedule meetings with you either by the phone um, or a video conference to answer any questions that you have and explain how the program will work. Um, I see that there's a, a question in there related to will this be packets or will this be a virtual thing? It will be a, a virtual thing, not a packet based system. And we'll explain that in a minute. Um, so now students who are on an IEP have to have the recommendation from the student's IEP team in order to be enrolled in independent study. So if you are a parent of a student who has an IEP, and you're interested in this, we will need to schedule an IEP with you and the IEP team um, to um, make sure you do that. I see there's a question on what is an IEP. So if a student is in special education, they have what's called an individualized educational program. Um, and an IEP is essentially a document that outlines um, all the goals and the conditions for that program that are agreed upon. So that's what an IEP is. All right, next slide. So this will be a course-based independent study. That's how it's referred to um, in the law, in the Ed Code. It is a virtual course. So students will attend a full school day and school week online. And part of the reason for this is the legislature has said we have to offer a program that is substantially similar and equal uh, to the regular program that would be during the school day. And this is obviously concerned that they want high quality programs that exist um, for students to learn um, and not be shortchanged in any way from instruction. So it will be a synchronous, which is a live instruction with a certificated credential teacher um, and students will be basically in class virtually all day for the same number of minutes that they would be had they been in person. Uh, they'll have a lunch and they'll have those things as, as well and breaks like they would normally, but you'll basically be on the same in-person schedule, um, just be virtually. Um, so there'll be an additional interaction and support that is also available virtually, just like it would be in person. So we have a lot of in-person services um, for, for students who have additional needs. Those same type of supports will be available in a virtual format. Um, However, things like very specialized programs, such as our dual immersion program, uh, Project Lead the Way classes, things that are very specialized are not available in the course-based independent study program. 
All right, they will be taught via Zoom and Google Classroom by a credential teacher, which is great. All right, so next slide. I see a question in there, so virtual is not offered. This is all virtual. So this is what we're talking about, independent study. It is a virtual program. Um, so I mentioned the specialized programs. Those things are not available through this. Um, if you are um, part of the learning agreement for any failure to abide by the conditions that are there could result in the student being returned to in-person instruction. Uh, however, we do want to work with all our families to try to break down any barriers that may be uh, preventing engagement or, or things like that. So if you are interested in the independent study program and you'd like information, we have two ways um, for you to access information. One is to go to the link that is there. Um, so if you type in that link, and I encourage you to take a screenshot with your camera right now if you want that link, you can fill out the form um, and we have you on a list and you will be contacted before school starts to talk about that option. Or you can call our student services department at 631-4627 and we will basically fill that form out for you while talking with you over the phone to give you information. So either way, um, you will get your name identified on the list so that we can uh, then reach out to you and have deeper conversations and answer any questions that you might have. We recognize that sometimes um, our families have individual questions related to their situation, and we wanna make sure we try to answer those to you, um, you know, in a personal way as possible. All right, okay. So um, that's that, I, I'm gonna go ahead at this point. I know there's been a lot of rapid fire questions that are going on in the chat. We're taking those down um, and we will release an FAQ document to answer those things very specifically. But for anybody who missed any part of what we said already too, this again will be on the YouTube channel and you can go back and listen to it for any clarity. And please feel free to email us um, or give us a call if you have additional questions. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now back to our Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services, Laura Rosco. Good evening again. So I will be going over the ESSER 3 plan um, with everyone. And again, just as a reminder, if you have any questions or comments um, and things that maybe come up that you might want to give us some feedback on spending different funds or you feel that maybe uh, we can add to uh, our purchases or how to help our students, please add them to the chat, your questions or comments or any kind of feedback. We'd appreciate if you can add it to the chat. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, one of the most important things for our BCSD is the safety of our students and our staff. That is of utmost importance for us. And that is, you know, how BCSD will always run our schools. We, we always want to make sure that that's at the, at the forefront of what we do. Uh, so in response to the 2019, uh, the COVID, Congress passed the American Rescue Plan. It was signed in March of 2021. Um, and so this is the third federal stimulus funding that we received because of the pandemic of COVID-19. So there is, we have the CARES Act, and then we have the CRRSA, which is the uh, Corona Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act. And so basically there's funds, and I'm gonna go over what we, what we have, what it's for. Um, and it's basically, it's a stimulus, a stimulus funding for our district to ensure that there's safety and academic achievement for our students. So one of the things that um, through the ARP, BCSD will need to complete two requirements to receive ESSER funding. So we have to do two things in order to be able to access those funds. One of them is a safe, uh, safe return to in-person instruction and continued continuity, continuity of services plan. And so that's what uh, Dr. Fullingwider just went over with you. It was a return to school plan. So that's what we just did. The other one is going to be the expenditure plan. So this is going to be, we're going to discuss how we're going to spend this money um, and in detail. So I'm going to go over some of the things that we have already that we have plans. Um, but again, if there's certain things that you feel that, that uh, you feel are necessary or is necessary, please add to the chat. So ESSER funds must be used to implement prevention and mitigation strategies to continuously and safely open and operate schools for in-person learning. So one of the things that we have to continue to do is just as we've done in the past, ensuring that we provide meals regardless of educational setting. So we, we've been doing that, we will continue to do that. Access to safe and inclusive learning environments, addressing loss instructional time, and this is um, including for our English learners, our foster youth, our homeless, our students with disabilities, um, what Dr. Fullenware has spoken of, those students that have an IEP, low income and students of color and migratory students. 
Part of this is also use of evidence to identify students. So at our school sites, and we have to determine how is it that we, we know that our students need certain services or certain, um, how do we close that the learning that we've been, the learning recovery uh, from the past year and a half of the pandemic. So that's gonna be a, a, um, incumbent upon the schools to be able to figure out what is it that our kids need and how we provide those services to our students. We must engage school and, school and community, educators, staff, students, families, and outside agencies. And that's where you're here today. You're here today to be this part of the collaborative process for BCSD. So as we're going through this, please add again to the chat. Uh, support educator and staff stability and well-being. So a minimum of 20% of funds on actions to address student needs as a result of lost instructional time through evidence-based interventions. So we have, there's a lot of research in education where we read and we determine what are the best practices or the best strategies where students can learn or strategies that we use in the classroom, teachers use in the classroom so that we can accelerate learning, especially when it's been a year and a half of, of some learning loss. And so we want to work on the learning recovery of our students. How do we catch them up back to where we want them to, to continue the learning? Because that is going to be a challenge. Um, and so that's what we need to work on. And that's what these extra funds are also for. So part of the, the areas that we, we need to work on is going to be the mental health needs of our students, our staff. I mean, some of our kids coming back, um, it, there, there might have been some loss. So we are going to focus on that. Relationships are key for BCSD, for our staff, for our administrators, for everyone in BCSD and for our kids when they come back. We know that's a focus and we know that's important for them and it's crucially important for us as well. Emotional needs, um, you know, bringing them back and getting them ready and getting them excited um, is going to be something that we look forward to and seeing our kiddos to come back. And we know some of them have struggled um, either being home or they've, there's been, again, some loss in the families. So we want to be ready and prepared to be able to support our students and our families. Social needs, academic needs, and in terms of social needs, I'm sure kids want to come back. I know my kids want to go back and see their friends and interact again. So we're excited for that as well. Academic needs, this is where our teachers are just, this fundamental for us with our teachers, the work that they've been doing even now, they've been going to training, I mean, even this week to prepare for our kids and be ready to, to uh, welcome our kids back. Um, opportunity gaps that existed before and were exasperated by the COVID-19 pandemic. So we know that before the pandemic, you know, maybe there were some challenges for some of our kids. And so now with the pandemic, maybe they made it worse or maybe we didn't address it as well as we could because we didn't have our kids in our classrooms. And so part of these funds is going to be to make sure that we close that gap and that we recover all that learning and be able to work with our kids and provide the services and um, leave it, provide them with our education opportunity that BCSD is known for. Um, so in terms of the 44 schools that we have, there are certain things that we, we are trying to get ready in our classrooms. And one of the, 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 the elements is ensuring that we have a ventilation system that will help our staff and our students long-term. So this is something that we want to replace our, our chiller systems with our HVAC system. That's very important for us because aside from the ionization of our air in our classrooms, we wanted to make sure that our air is, um, is going to be healthier for everyone in the classroom, it includes our staff and our students and our administrators. So that's going to be a, a part of what we're going to spend our, um, our money and ESSER funds to ensure that we have that. Um, again, safety is one of our, our primary um, focus that we have. So we want to ensure that that happens. Continue to provide meals during long-term closures to all students, just as we did when we closed um, back in March, and then we did all of last year, that will continue. Provide technology, which has been a huge thing. I know a lot of us have learned real fast, uh, the Zoom and, and a lot of parents learn Google Classroom. And so we wanna continue to provide our students with their Chromebook and hotspots and the necessary technology that we need to continue. Online strategies to public health protocols and policies, which is what Dr. Fullenwriter mentioned, wearing our masks, uh, ensuring that we wash our hands, um, the things of the like. So just making sure that we continue with those safety protocols to ensure that we all stay safe and we follow the protocols. Um, then we have, um, we identified the following needs. Uh, one of the things is increased enrollment in our after-school program. And, and uh, in a little bit, uh, it'll be the last thing I'm gonna go over with you, the different activities and fun things we have. We're excited for the kids. Um, increase student engagement through clubs, sports, and other allowable activities. 
So making sure that we involve kids and uh, wanting to get kids excited to come to school with, you know, after school, during lunchtime. So that's something we're working on currently. Activities necessary to maintain the operation and continuity of services for students. Again, continue with the education, continue with the emotional uh, support, with the mental health support. Um, it's important for us in the relationship building. Administration of assessments, I really assess students' academic progress. This is where our teachers do a, a, an awesome job to ensure that we're assessing constantly and making sure that as the kids are progressing, um, and if there's something that the kids need, then we provide the support after the assessment. Provide differentiated instruction. We know that not all of us learn the same way, so part of what our teachers are also excellent at doing is being able to differentiate and help our students that are struggling um, and then advance those that are advanced. Support for parents and students who do not return to in-person instruction. Again, going back to the independent study that Dr. Fulling Wright spoke about is, you know, depending on what the situation is, that's what we're going to be providing. Provide opportunities for extended learning after school on Saturday and in the summer. Just as we provided summer learning this year, where that's our plan to provide summer learning in the following, the coming uh, summer. And of course, the after school program, that's been, a, a, um, our kids love coming to after school program. We want to extend that. We want to provide more opportunities for more of our students in BCSD. So these are for the extended learning opportunities. We're so excited. Uh, we do have a new director, Jennifer Santillana. She's on here. She's going to be leading that department under Dr. Fullingwider. And so part of what we're going to do is in order to get our kids to come and get them excited and be part of um, a, a different groups after school, we have the extended learning opportunity. The Bakersfield City School District Extended Learning Program is dedicated to provide a safe after-school education enrichment and youth development program for first to eighth grade students. So some of the things that we're planning and our, our uh, specialists are getting ready for with our director and our school site um, is heroes, technology, science, robotics. I mean, all, the, all that's coming in the future. Math games, folklorico, dance, mariachi, community service, gardening, chess, and the arts. Then we also have the different extended learning modules. We have space, service, um, service superheroes, money and economics, theater, dance again, design school, and agriculture, especially Bakersfield because we, this is what agriculture is huge in our, here in our county. So that is it for our presentations. I, we know it's a lot of information. We know you're gonna have questions and so please add them to the chat. We will go back and answer the, the questions and create a FAQ. Um, and thank you for being with us. Thank you for the support. We are really excited to see our kids back in school. Schools are meant to have children in the classrooms. We want to see our buses, the kids full of uh, kids, uh, buses full of kids, sorry, um, in, and headed to our school. So we're excited to welcome our students in person. Uh, we're really excited. So thank you for being here. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Lukey. Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you, Tim. As we conclude tonight, we're going through the questions right now. Again, we don't have enough time to go through every question, but let me just address a couple of the highlights that I see as themes of, within the uh, chat box. First and foremost, masks. There's quite a um, passion on the mask debate. Uh, both sides, I understand your positions. As the superintendent for BCSD, uh, we are mandated to ensure that our students are in masks when they are indoors in an indoor learning environment. That is a requirement from the state of California. Uh, so we are going to follow that requirement and ensure that our students are safe when they're at school. Uh, and the requirement is not in existence outdoors. So we are not going to require our kids to wear a masks outdoors. We understand the complexities of mask wearing. Uh, and we're just doing our best to follow the requirements. Uh, in terms of masks, uh, a doctor's note for a medical issue would be necessary uh, to uh, not uh, be in a mask. If you have questions about that, you can contact our dis district and our staff will uh, walk you through the steps on that process. Um, so uh, we, again, are gonna follow the, the rules that we have been given. Uh, and ensure that our students are wearing masks uh, while they are indoor, taking place in indoor learning environments. Um, we had a question in the chat box, several questions about, you know, what happens if a child doesn't wear a mask? Well, our job is to teach kids routines and procedures. And so we are going to 
teach and support our students. Uh, we ran program during the spring, beginning on April the 8th, concluding on June the 8th, and throughout that entire time, our students maintained their masks while at school. We ran approximately eight weeks of summer program this summer. The entire time, our students follow the rules regarding mask wearing. So we're gonna to continue to support our students uh, and uh, ensure that they are reminded if they forget. Uh, we have plenty of masks available uh, to support our students should they forget their mask, lose their mask, soil their mask. Um, we will provide those to our uh, students and staff. Uh, the next issue, virtual learning and independent study. If you are interested in that topic, uh, again, uh, please fill out the form. It's on our district website, I believe. Uh, it's also uh, within the slide deck and we'll put in the chat box again. Uh, that will then um, result in a conversation with families and beginning on April, excuse me, on August the 9th, you can reach out to your school site and engage in that conversation as well. Uh, our after school program, after school, school programs will be in person, just like our regular school day. And that process, uh, we are hoping that every child, every family who desires, who wants to be part of the after school program um, can be enrolled. After school program, however, is only for students in grades one through eight. So if you have a kindergarten student, you would have to wait until your first grade year to enroll in the after school program. Distancing requirements on the playground. Those requirements are no longer in place. So we will ensure that our students have ample time to be on the yard, to enjoy themselves, stretch their legs, do a little bit of physical activity um, while they are on their breaks from their learning time. Uh, lunches. All of you recognize that our schools, many of them have smaller cafeteria spaces. Certainly we recognize that we need to ensure that there's some space. So we will utilize both indoor and outdoor spaces to support our students to have access to their meals, eat their lunch before they go out and have their uh, free time on the playground. And then lastly, busing. We will provide busing. Those bus routes will be made available the week prior to school beginning. And our bus drivers will ensure that our students are on the bus safe, uh, that masks are on, that our windows are down, so that we can uh, get our students to and from school. Students who are in independent study, of course, we will provide students an opportunity to come pick up their lunch, as we did last year, as part of our process, um, to feed them prior to resuming their afternoon of learning. And so again, if you have questions about any of this, you can reach out to our district office as early as tomorrow morning at 631-4600. Uh, we will have the FAQ document completed with answers. So please encourage you to access our district website at www.bcsd.com uh, to review that. And lastly, if again, you have a desire to ask about the independent study program or learn more about it, encourage you to fill out the form or call our student services office at 631-4627. Ultimately, our goal and priority is to return to in-person learning for our students. Our kids have missed a lot throughout the past 16, 17 months. We have not known normalcy since March 17th of 2020. We are doing our best to ensure the safest environment for our students and staff so that our students can get back to learning in person, rebuilding relationships with their teachers, their friends, and ensuring that they reach their ultimate success of academic excellence in our schools and in our district. Certainly, as we encounter challenges, as we see conditions adjust, we too will adjust. And we ask that you continue to work with us in collaboration to support our children as we go about educating them uh, in these challenging times. Thank you very much for your time tonight. We're gonna leave the chat open, the um, town hall meeting open so that you can offer your comments into the chat. Um, but again, thank you for your time tonight. We appreciate you. We look forward to seeing you back as we begin school. Uh, and again, please reach out with questions. Have a good evening. Thank you.